Amen. Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 4 through 6. One day you were born, on the day you were born, no one cared about you. Your umbilical cord was not cut, and you were never washed, rubbed with salt, or wrapped in a cloth. No one had the slightest interest in you. No one pitied you or cared for you. On the day you were born, Jesus, you were unwanted, dumped in a field, and left to die. I feel like having a little church at verse 6, but I came by. I don't know if you've been through enough hell for everybody on your road. Aren't you glad Jesus didn't leave you like he found you? You ought to shout, I came by. And saw you there helplessly kicking about in your own blood. And as you lay there, I said, somebody shout, live. Yeah. I'm at the wrong church today. I'm going to give you another chance. Somebody shout, live. Yeah. I saw you laying there helplessly kicking about in your own blood. And I said, live. Look at somebody close to you. Say, neighbor, God told me to tell you. That whatever it is you need, I got it. You may be seated. I got it. And every person who's leaning and dependent on God said, amen. I want to say I'm so excited to be here on Resurrection Weekend. I mean this. There are certain services that you go to that if you got any myopic amount of Jesus in you, you get excited. I mean, it doesn't take much. Easter Sunday is one of those Sundays for me. It's not about clothes. It's about souls. It's not about how many people can come to church. It's about how many people we can take from the devil's hands. I am excited about Resurrection Weekend, YPMJ, simply because he got up. There are certain scriptures that I have to properly harmonize my hermeneutics with relevant homiletics. There are certain scriptures that I have to break down and take time to really expand and expound upon. But then there are certain scriptures to me that just really cause you to appreciate the love of God like never before. On Easter weekend, let's not play with it. We all know the story. You learned this as you matriculated through Sunday School 101. Everybody knows what's going to happen at the end of my message. He going to get up. Not with some power. Not with a little power, but with what? See, I need a Baptist church. I'm tired of y'all new school saints. Let's not play the game. You know this. He was killed on Friday. Stayed dead. How long Saturday? All day Saturday. If you don't say this like your grandmama, I got a problem with you. Then early? I need a better church. I'm going to say it again. I'm going to try it again. I need your help. He was killed on Friday. Stayed dead. All day sat. I need to hear a growl like you got greens cooking at home. And then Sunday morning, he got up not with a little power, but with in his what? Here's what's critical. This didn't hit me till I was talking to my baby boy Miles earlier this morning. They literally taught us that he got up with all power, not in his feet, not just in his heart, but they were very intentional saying he got all power. In his hand, yet they teach me when I'm a child, he has the whole world in his hand. He's got you and me in his hand. And I used to think that meant he was holding me. But what I realize now being over 30 years old is what they were trying to teach me was, is if you ever feel powerless, you're in the grasp of the power one. I don't think you heard what I just said right there. He got up with all power in his hands. Yes, I could have went to Matthew. Yes, I could have went to Mark. Yes, I could have went to Luke or John and just preached about him being on the cross. But as your leader, I always want to challenge you by showing you things in the Bible that maybe no one has ever taught or somebody has never shined light on. And when we find ourselves... In Ezekiel chapter 16, we find a story that most people run from. Crystal, this is cold because most people want to talk about him getting up. We want to talk about the eschatological impact, eschatology, which is the study of the end time. Eschatological impact. So we shout about the eschatological impact, the fact that he got up. Then we breeze past the existential reality, the fact that he went down. 
preach PMJ. My problem with the 21st century church is that we have become a generation of Christians who shout on foolishness then sit on substance. My problem with the new school Christian is that everybody want to shout over the resurrection. But how can you properly shout over the resurrection until you grasp in totality the sovereignty of the crucifixion? I can't shout about him getting up until I realize he actually went down. And that's why half of your family and three of your friends don't understand your praise. Because they, they saw your come up. They weren't with you when you went down. And I don't know who I'm preaching to, but God sent me here to tell you he gave you a public crucifixion because he's getting ready to give you a public resurrection. That everybody who saw you struggle about to see your success. As a matter of fact, you ought to just bust a 360 and tell him, take a picture of me. Because what I look like now, I won't look like next year. What I'm going through now, I won't go through next year. God is giving me a public resurrection. You ought to jump up and shout, I receive that. This is why, this is why you should appreciate those who saw your struggle. I like this particular text because it is in Ezekiel chapter 16. It is in Ezekiel chapter 16 that we see a prophetic word. I like Ezekiel chapter 16. Why PMJ? Because if I could give you context so you could respect the content. I like Ezekiel 16 because God has given them a prophetic word about their unfaithfulness. We know this. They have been unfaithful. Why, Pastor Mike? For four reasons. Number one, put this in your notes, please. In chapter 12, they were stubborn. In chapters 13 and 14, they began to listen to false prophets. In chapter 15, they're deemed useless. And in chapter 16, they now have a track record of being unfaithful. I just gave you five chapters in five seconds. In chapter 12, I hope you catch this, in chapter 12, they are stubborn. Now, I see some of y'all shaking y'all head like, how could they be stubborn? After all God has done for them. When truth be told, it's some stubborn folk in Israel. Don't look at me with that tone of voice. Don't, help, don't act like God ain't never told you to wake up and pray. And instead of you getting out the bed, falling on your knees, you try to lay on your back and get a good prayer in. Because you were too stubborn. I got to get up in two minutes. I'm going to go stubborn. Don't act like God ain't ever told you to forgive some people or apologize to some people. Then all of a sudden you said, I ain't apologizing to them. I didn't do nothing. Stubborn. Don't act like God ain't ever spoke to your heart and said, I want you to let that thing go. But you weren't done being mad yet. Stubborn. Don't ever act like you weren't supposed to get up and be on the stream, but you decided I can just watch it later. See, the fact of the matter is live long enough. The worst thing, please hear your boy right here. The worst thing that God has done for some of you is been good. I'm going to talk to y'all. They sleep over there. The worst thing God has done for some of you, they still sleep. The worst thing that God has done for some of you has been good. What if I told you the biggest problem in your life is the fact that God always shows up. And because he always shows up, you start thinking you don't have to do nothing. It's God's job to get you out. When God says, sometimes I'm going to leave you in it until your stubborn butt get enough sense to walk yourself up out of it. Somebody say, stubborn. Listen to your boy. Chapter 12, they become stubborn. But I like this because by chapter 16, they have a history of being unfaithful. Why is this important, PMJ? This is so important because I see something in the text worth talking about. I see a progressive downfall. Put that in your notes for me, please. A progressive downfall. Make that make sense, Pastor Mike. You don't just fall. This, this is so, this, this, Ms. Smith, I mean, this is so cold-blooded. You don't wake up on Monday and be all the way backslid. It's progressive. Well, well some of y'all woke up. You, you, you don't just wake up on Monday. You, you don't wake up on Monday and you all the way left. No, it is progressive. It's not praying on Monday. Mm. Not talking to God on Tuesday. Uh, missing a couple Sundays. Uh, hanging with people who co-sign your foolishness. Getting a blessing. I, I got a tree that's down in my backyard that fell when the last tornado came. I looked out there this morning and it has leaves on it. Keep in mind, it is not upright. 
It is laying on the ground. I called the yard guy. I said, yo, I said, that tree we got to cut, cut up that fell. It got leaves on it. He said, yeah, it got one more cycle in it. Y'all missed that. I, I said, what you mean? He said, well, the tree, the branches don't know it's disconnected. Because it's been connected, whether it fall or not, it has one more cycle to produce leaves. And some of y'all are in trouble because you've been disconnected from God and you thought your last blessing was affirmation that you were favored when you don't realize God just blessed you because in spite of your disconnection, you had another cycle. See, the blessing was already in mo. Who am I preaching to? See, see, the blessing or the leaves were already in progress, which means if the blessing was already in the work. God said, I'm not going to stop the blessing because you stubborn. I'm still going to bless you. Watch this. Not because I'm good or not because you're good, but because I'm God. <laughs> they are stubborn. But watch this. Chapter 12, they become stubborn. 13, 14, they're deemed Useless. So what happens, Pastor Mike, I need you to catch this. 13, 14, they begin to listen to false prophets. That, that's so critical. Why, PMJ? Because who you listen to is critical. Can you put this in your notes? I want you to tweet this. I want you to put this on the gram. I want you to share this with everybody. This is your last I got it of the whole day right here, okay? Here it is. I want you to share this word. If Satan can talk angels out of heaven, he can talk you into hell. Michael, if Satan can talk angels out of heaven, surely he can talk you into hell. You want to know what I've discovered? The reason I really want you to get deeper, a deeper relationship with God has nothing to do with what you need. Because what I desire for you is not a better house. It's not a better car. It's not more money. I'm ready for you to actually believe you are who he said you are. Why is that important, PMJ? Because the problem that most people face is that when they hear from God, they doubt what they heard from God because they know the mess that they're currently in. <laughs> so what happens is, have you ever been praying about, should you take a job or not? Should you move or not? Should you do something or not? And you feel you heard from God, but because you don't trust you. I'm talking heavy if you're receiving because you don't trust you. You then go look for affirmation from somebody who you think is actually living right. When in actuality, they're probably living way more wrong than you. They just know how to fake it a whole lot better than you do. Why, PMJ? So we think because they don't club, they're holy. We think because they quote a couple scriptures, they're holy. We think because they know enough church that they're holy. When you don't realize God does not examine the outer appearance. God examines the heart. And the problem with us is that we try to deem who's saved by how they look, not by how they live. Michael, they are listening to false prophets. And I came to help somebody whose faith is running on low because you've been listening to false prophets. I came to help somebody whose confidence is running low because you've been listening to people spread lies and you've been believing them because the ear is the birth canal to your spirit. The ear is the birth canal to your spirit. If I want to impregnate your spirit, I have to put something in your ear. If I put the right thing in your ear, you will give birth to the right thing. Mm. But if they put the wrong thing in your ear, you give birth to the wrong thing. This is why half of y'all still come to church because you're tired of hearing false prophets tell you what you can't do. No, I need a couple of people in my life who can speak some life into me. You really don't even know who you sit next to. Just tell everybody around you, be grateful you sit next to me today. Tell her, because I'm going to speak some stuff that's going to make a lot in you wake up. I, just look at somebody and just prophesy something powerful over their life. Tell them you will win by the end of this year. Tell them the business will flourish. Tell them you get ready to experience what eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Oh, you ain't got nobody on your road and talk to yourself 
and say, self, the devil is a liar. God did not bring you this far just to bring you this far. I feel a little church on me today because you know you have a right heart. When won't nobody encourage you, but you got enough faith to encourage yourself. Somebody ought to shout, it's already done. Church me. Hear me, hear me. So, so hear me when I say this. So he says there, I'm good. So hear me when I say this. They, they are stubborn in chapter 12. After being stubborn in chapter 12, they listen to false prophets in 13 and 14. I, I didn't see this at any other services this weekend. At this service, it just hit me. They go through one chapter of stubbornness, two chapters of listening to the wrong people, which lets me know they weren't only stubborn with God. They were stubborn in every area of their life. Michael, and because they are stubborn in the next two chapters, by the next chapter, they are deemed useless. But then by chapter 15, they have a track record of living wrong. This is crazy right here, and I don't know who I'm preaching to, because what happens is because of being stubborn in 12, listening to wrong people in 13, 14, being deemed useless in 15. Now, you would think after someone calls you useless, you would fight to prove them wrong. But the stubbornness has grown. Can you put this in your notes? Whatever you feed grows. Michael, whatever you feed grows. So if you got people who are feeding your fears, no matter what God tries to do next year, you are going to live antithetical to what he wants to do because you've been having people feed the negativity that is bringing in your life. And I like this scripture, why, Pastor Mike? Because when we get to chapter 16, this is the longest prophetic word in Ezekiel. 63 verses of a rebuke. 63 verses of a rebuke. See, this is why y'all didn't shout. If I was at your grandmama church, they would have been real loud right there. Because the new church like rejoice. The old school church enjoyed rebuke. See, see, this is why I got a problem with new school prophets, because it feels as if the only time you profit is when there's a prophet. I'm going to say it again. This is my issue with new school prophets, because it feels like the only time you profit is when there's a prophet. If I got to stand in a $75 line for you to tell me what God needs me to get, I believe that's not my word, or you are now profiting over what God wants me to get. Because if God really desired for me to get the word, he wouldn't make me pay. See, I'm from old school church. Forget y'all. I'm from old school church. At old school church, they just didn't prophesy that houses and cars were coming. They didn't prophesy that a new job was coming. At old school church, they would stand up and say stuff like, exposure is in the house. And it's time for you to start living right. And what I discovered is we've made church so cool that we are making people comfortable in the stuff that they're in. When God is saying, I love you and my grace is sufficient. And if you think you blessed living wrong. Can you imagine how much blessed you would be if you ever told me yes? Now, I know you ain't going to say amen because you want your neighbor to think you're perfect. But look at that neighbor and say, forget all y'all. If you done been through some stuff and survived some stuff, and it's some seasons of your life where you should have told God yes, but you didn't tell God yes, you ought to just jump up and shout, change me, oh God. Church me. Hear me when I say this. So when we get to chapter 16, he starts rebuking them. And I like this type of rebuke. Ooh, I like this. You want to know why I like this, mama? Because Negroes forget. I, I like this. So, so, so it, the picture of being stubborn, I mean, this is stubborn. Hey, I, I just want you to live right. Huh, going on? So, hey, you coming to church today? I ain't got time for that. Hey, 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 I, you know I love you, right? Hey, hey, you know you, know you could have been in captivity, but my grace is sufficient. Hey, hey I, 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 I know you, didn't, you ain't been tithing. You ain't been living right. You ain't been doing nothing, but I'm still taking care of you and your family and your kids. Huh? Okay, come on now. Hey, hey, I'm, 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 hey, 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 because we start treating the Ten Commandments. Like the ten options. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, hey, come, come on. So, so God, like, come on. Come on. I, I'm not preaching to everybody, but, but I do want to preach to seven folk who bold enough to just stand with your past and say, lately, I feel like I've been feeling God tell me, all right now. <laughs> all right? Because cause warning. I'm going to catch three of y'all. Don't worry. Warning. Come. See, see, you ain't scared. 
Am I the only person who lately I've been like, oh, this getting cut? Because at one point, you could do whatever you want to do, and it's like you was just breezing by, but it feel like now stuff getting close to you. Like, like woo, what, what happened? You, you did woo. And God like, hey, hey, I love you. Hey, hey, I love you. Hey, remember me? I love you. Hey, hey, hey. And now everybody on you because back then, Back, back then, they, they ain't want you. But look, God done cleaned you up. You, you used to be ashy, ugly, dirty, had the wig that we could see it coming off at the top just a little bit. Your edges was glued to your face so hard that I could just rub the sticky stuff off. Your jeans weren't nice. Your Jordan didn't do this. Your Jordan did this. And yet didn't nobody like you. You didn't have no money. You was broke. You was ugly. Who gonna want you? Then all of a sudden that favor started dripping on you. Give me a little more up here. And God like, hey, hey. Hey, but all of a sudden, you didn't have friends then. But now you got a little paper. Now everybody want to be your friend. God like, hey, hey. All of a sudden, now you got a whole clique and a whole circle. And God like, hey, hey. Back then, you only knew two scriptures, barely knew how to pray. And God was all you had. But now you got a little stuff, a little piece of business, a little piece of house, a little piece of money. Now God is like, hey, hey. Then all of a sudden, in chapter 16, God I said, you know what? I'm done being nice. Come here real quick. On the day you were born, didn't nobody care about you. Your mama didn't want you. Your daddy didn't want you. You was about to die. See, I've realized in my life, now that I'm creeping up on 40, that I don't have to be nice to everybody. God wants me to be kind. But then there are certain people that reach a certain point in your life where you got to remind them where you found them. Look at your neighbor and say, I think he's preaching to me, not you, I think. You got to remind God. God says, hey, 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 hey. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. I wish you would be standing in that Sheraton Hotel like you big bad Pastor Mike Jr. who can do whatever he want to do. You better not forget, boy, them, them teeth wasn't there when you started Rock City Church. Don't make me. But then, no, don't, no, now you got that suburban now. Don't forget, y'all used to hitchhike. You have to take your wife to work, then pick her back up. And dude, the boy don't act like you didn't live in that extended stay. And my problem with the 21st century church, a whole lot of y'all got amnesia. I'm sorry, selective amnesia. And God told me for the next 60 seconds, don't shout about where you are. You need to praise God from where you come from. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But if God has brought you from a mighty long way, I'm going to give you 60 seconds to thank God. Looks at him, he says, on the day you were born, how dare you get that new promotion and forget God? How you prayed, fasted, sold, and cried for it, then got it and forgot about him? Devil is a liar. No, no. God has blessed me now to where musically we be traveling all over the world performing and had a huge opportunity this weekend. It's resurrection weekend. That means if anybody brings you out, that money is just ridiculous. Hear me when I say this. This is like the Super Bowl weekend for churches. So everybody and their mama call it. Can Pastor Mike John come just on Saturday? He come on Saturday. We fly him back out to his church. And I'm like, I can't do it. Then somebody mess around and ask me why. I was like, well, I got I to gotta perform for a sold-out show in Birmingham. They said, we don't see it on Ticketmaster. I said, no, it's, it's for free. They, they, they was like, well, well we, we don't see any flyers for it. I said, man, it's probably two or three hundred uh, 10 and 12-year-olds. I, I said, way before big, I used to be on Saturdays with my babies before Easter. They said, well, brother, you're on a different level. No, you you on a different level. I am not about to let God take me here and forget what he did for me there. See, I am only preaching to y'all who can honestly say, when God bless me with what I'm praying for, ain't going to be no change in who I am. I shout with money like I shouted when I was broke. 
He says, don't forget on the day you were born. And many of y'all are frustrated because you see people and you think that they have more favor than you. They have more grace than you because they have stuff. Can I free you? God will never, God will never use external things to produce internal change. I'm talking heavy today. God will never use external things to produce internal change. Let me free you. God will never give you stuff to transform your heart. And let me free some of y'all who use this word. Somebody shout favor. We, I, I'm, we, I'm so tired of y'all misusing favor. I am so, favor. No, no, you go to the dealership, get a car, favor. No, no, I, I want to free you. Favor is not manifested in how much stuff you got. Seven of y'all going to catch this. More stuff don't mean more God. Ooh. Ooh. More stuff don't mean more God. No, favor ain't in what I drive. Favor is not in how many zeros in my bank account. Favor is not on which side of the street I live on. Favor is in the fact that what could have took me out. I miss, I miss old school songs. Tragedies are commonplace. All kinds of diseases. People are slipping away. Muggers and robbers. No place seems to be safe. But as for me, all I can say is thank you, Lord, for... It could have been me outdoors with no food and no clothes all alone without a friend or just another number with a tragic end but you didn't see fit to let none of these things But you get a see fit to let none of these things be. You see, hear me. Easter, Easter isn't about this fairy tale of this fictional character getting up. He died to show you he was human. He got up to show you he was God. And he tells them, he says, on the day you were born, nobody cared about you. Nobody. That means, that means both your parents abandoned you. What's critical here, and I'm going to let you go, what's critical here is that when you look at the text, his, his father was an Amatite, his mother was a Hittite, his, his father was semi-nomadic, his mother was flourishing in an empire. Jesus Christ. So within him are two things, Tez. There's one side of him that's nomadic. Now, you didn't shout when I said nomadic. You don't know the definition. Nomadic comes from a group of people who are nomads, which means they roam. They don't have a home. Nomads go from house to house, couch to couch, city to city. They ain't loyal to nobody. They up and leave. They, they for the streets. No, no, nomads are for the streets. They don't have a place called home. Yet his mother is in a place that's stable and flourishing. I ain't preaching to everybody. I'm only preaching to three of y'all who can say, Pastor Mike, I ain't trying to be funny. I got some nomad in me. And I got some of my mother in me. Which means that's one side of me, mother who's flourishing, who's reigning. It's another side of me that's in the streets that's roaming. There's a side of me that knows I'm a king. Side of me that knows I'm a queen. But then there's another side of me that roams, that acts. Oh, you're going to look at me like that, huh? Like the last three people you dated, you never would have dated had you been on your throne. You found them while you was roaming. I, I don't know who I'm preaching to. Look at your name and say, stop roaming. Stop roaming. Hear me? I, I get off the plane. I, I get off the plane. 
I get off the plane in Chicago, and I'm trying to send my text messages. They won't go through. Baby girl, I'm, I'm trying my best to send my text messages. Bro, it just won't go through, okay? And I'm trying, I'm trying. Then somebody said something to me that messed me up. They said, you got to give your phone a second. I said, why? They said, it's roaming. I said, ooh. I looked at the top of my phone, and the bars were going crazy. It was kind of lighting up, lighting up. Then all of a sudden, it, it connected. Ro roaming means I'm, I'm searching for connection. Now, it's certain things I don't say at certain services because I feel like God wants me to say them in certain services. I haven't said this in all four or five, all weekends. So I'm going to say it to you today, okay? Okay. I told the last service, I said, now, many of you were roaming because you were searching for connection. What I feel God lead me to tell this service is, although my phone was roaming, it asked me, did I want to accept the fees? Michael, because you do not roam for free. Preach PMJ. If you ain't going to pay the cost, you don't get the connection. Stop wanting what your neighbor got if you ain't going to pay the price to connect to what they connected to. Now, I ain't preaching to everybody, but I am preaching to three of y'all who can just say, Pastor Mike, everything I got paid for. Yeah. Oh, what that mean, PMJ? This favor ain't free. I paid for this. Pastor Mike, but it's unmerited. I sacrifice. I sacrifice. I done had some long nights. I done had some long days. I done had to cry myself to sleep. You better get off the internet talking about I want that relationship. You don't know the roaming charges that came with that relationship. You better stop looking at people's car like, I wish I had the car. You don't know the roaming charges that come with that. Hear me when I say this. I discovered that there are certain seasons of my life where I had to pay more because I was roaming. Roaming. Michael. Roaming. Roaming. I, that, that, the, the, correct, the correct term for that would be Rome. 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 Okay, I want to say this to you. All right, I'm going to try to show you. I wanted to come back from the pandemic and make y'all think I was smart. Okay, I, I used to be real ghetto, okay? But our church is maturing. We're not just young anymore. I want to be a little bit more civilized. We're we, we going to be, you, you got me? Okay. All right, so yeah, I, I, you got me? All right, so I'm, I'm, I'm listen to me. I want to be very clear. Okay. All right, if you watch on the stream, all right, we're going to go to a commercial. Okay, watch this. I am so proud of what I'm about to say. I feel smart. And some of y'all gonna think I'm dumb because you're going to be like, boy, you almost 40 and you just figured that out. But for me, I, I was a class clown. I, I wasn't paying attention. So what I'm about to say, regardless if it's good to you or not, you better make a noise. Help me help you. Okay? All right. All right. <clears throat> the correct term is Rome. Okay? Rome, R-O-A-M. But there's also a term called Rome, R-O-M-E. So, so you understand in literature or in language, you have homophones and homographs. Amanda, Amanda. <laughs> I'm talking to Amanda. She correct me. That's my member. Every Sunday I get through preaching, she sent me a text. Pastor, you said isn't when it should have been ain't, whatever. So, 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 so hear me. You got homophones and you got homographs. Now, okay, hear me. Homophones, ho homographs, homographs look the same. Homophones sound the same. Okay, homophone, homophone, homophone would be Rome. Because I said R-O-A-M, but it also can be R-O-M-E. It's like four. I can tell you four, which means I'm doing it for something. Or I can say four, which is literally the number four. It is a homophone. It sounds the same, but not spelt the same. Then you have homographs. I'm finna run. Homographs, which look the same. But mean something different, okay? Let, let, me, let me give you a simple homograph, 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 uh, dessert. Desert, D dessert, desert, desert, dessert, uh, uh, live. L I B E. Could be live, but it also can be. And, and the Holy Spirit said, Holy Spirit said, Mike, this is how your church survived the pandemic. I, I, I was like, how, how God? He said, they didn't realize they thought they were logged on to Rock City Live. But they were plugged in to Rock City Live. And, and when you stay plugged to something that's live, it makes you. Hear me. So, so what, what, I'm trying to, what, what I'm trying to get you to realize is that one side roamed, but the other side reigned. And because you were only listening with one ear, you thought rain only meant crown. But rain is a homophone, which means you have R-E 
R-I-G-N, which means it's your season. But you also got R-A-I-N, which means it's getting ready to overflow. And God told me to tell you, it's your season to reign, whichever one you want. I need you to look at your neighbor and say, get ready to reign. Get ready to reign. I declare jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, overflows coming in your life. You ought to high five three people and shout, rain! I might have church. Somebody ought to shout, it's my season. If your neighbor don't shout with you, tell them I ain't shouting for you. It's my season for faith. My season for overflow. My season for breakthrough. My season for promotion. My season for grace. My season for peace. My season for overflow. My season for abundance. You ought to high five somebody. And shout, it's yours. I'm in the wrong church. I'm in the wrong church. It's somebody in this section. It's somebody in this section. It's somebody in this section who God said, if you shout, I'm going to do it this week. favor. Do me a favor. You ready? Do me a favor. Pull your phone out. I want you to pull your phone out and I want you to go live. I just messed seven folk up. Because there's somebody sitting at home. It's somebody sitting at home who depressed, frustrated, irritated, aggravated. And I want you to let them know Thank you for watching my rain season. For the next three minutes, I want you to praise God. Your family's about to be blessed. Your children are about to be blessed. Your career is about to go into overflow. I'm giving you 60 seconds. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout! Shout! for 360. Every time I turn around, every time I turn around, every time I turn around, when I call something out, you ought to just turn. A better lifestyle. More peace than you ever had. More joy than you ever had. More strength than you ever had. More favor than you ever had. You ought to keep turning, cause God about. Hear me when I say this, hear me. If you're watching right now, the devil will try to trick you into believing that it's over for you. Watch this, I'm good. Homophones, homographs. Somebody shout over. over. Let, let me show you why this is crazy. Let me show you why this is crazy. Because homophone over means in. Or over can mean. Oh, 
And the Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you to flip what the devil meant for evil. He's been whispering in your ear, you know it's over. And what you should have said was, thank you, Jesus. It doesn't mean my situation is over. It means I'm about to get. Hear me. Hear me. And Jesus says, this scripture says, nobody loved you. Nobody cared. Nobody was there for you. Verse 6, but I came by and saw you helplessly kicking in your own blood. Let me show you what's crazy. If we asked a woman with the issue of blood, I bet she would tell you I would still be bleeding today had he not came by. If we asked Bartimaeus, he would tell you I would still be blind had he not came by. If you asked Zacchaeus, he would have told you I would still be in bondage had he not came by. Can I ask you a question? Where would you be? Crying Savior, Savior, hear my humble cry. No music. Grandmama didn't have none of that. She would just say, and master do in other words he's saying just come by and we're here right now because the greatest thing we can do on Easter is be a witness and if you're watching somebody's live stream wherever you are they're being a witness they loved you enough to say you are not in the room but I'm gonna put you in the room they loved you enough to say, hey, I ain't got it together either. Truth be told, I got a lot of issues. Ain't it crazy how you got advice for everybody but yourself? Have you ever told somebody something you hung up and was like, oh, that was good. Eh? Did you try to, you end up telling folk business because you called somebody? Guess what I told so-and-so who was going through? Hey, don't, don't tell nobody. I, told, I just got to tell you what I said. You want to know why? Because the anointing on your life is for everybody but you. Your oil was put on you to make a deposit. He says, but I came by. And I'm here today to look each and every one of you in the eyes and tell you, if you don't do nothing else today, I want to be very clear. I'm not that type of pastor who's going to say, well, you know, everybody come to church on Easter. I don't care. The fact that you hear, I pray in the name of Jesus against anxiety and depression, low self-esteem and heartbreak and heartache. God, some of us have anxiety in a major way, and, and God, we worry, and, and, and I know that that's not popular for a pastor to say because I'm supposed to be the spiritual juggernaut who has it together. God, I worry sometimes. I struggle with my faith sometimes, God. It's not that I know you, you're not God. I know that you're God, but I'm human. And sometimes I personally don't feel worthy. And I personally don't believe, because God, truth of the matter is, it's some of the stuff you do for me, I wouldn't have did for me. And God, if I'm being honest, I probably wouldn't have did it for other people. So I still can't figure out how you can still love me in spite of it. So, so, so for God, all I want to do today is not ask you for nothing just want to say thank you. God, I can leave out of here today and not make it tomorrow. Thank you. God, everything they know to be life can be gone in an instant. Thank you. God, in this moment, I ask that you equip us with all the strength to live this life you called us to. It get hard. Especially for men sometimes, God, because so much of our confidence is tied to our money. And that money acting funny. And when life gets hard and we don't really feel kingly, we tend to lash out and we, we go place and do stuff we shouldn't do. And it gets difficult for us. So I pray, pray for that brother, God, so he can hear from his pastor today that God loves you just where you are. 
that you don't have to be Pastor Mike. You don't have to be Jesus. You don't have to be John. God says, I love you just like you are. Right where you are, I'll come by if you let me. To that sister who's had to be strong for everybody. That God even now, she's finding it difficult to even have strength for herself. She's empty. She's poor until she could not pour anymore. And sadly, God, she's surrounded but don't feel like she's being replenished. I pray. I pray for that millennial guy who has a great career and they have a life plan and things are going according to plan. I pray, God, that they don't put their faith in their, in their order. Or, God, they don't put their faith in their personal structure. The fact that they got degrees and got plans and got connections and got a nice job and it's maybe making more money than their parents ever made. God, I pray that we realize everything that's happening to us that is good, God did. I pray for that person, God, who got more bill than they got money. They can sometimes be stressed and overwhelmed and frustrated. I ask in this moment that you give them the courage and the strength to just stay the course. I don't believe you brought us this far just to bring us this far. So God, right now, let them know that you, I want to let them know that you love them. I want to let them know, God, that you are not like church. That God, we don't care about their clothes. God, I, I don't care if they got weed in their pocket. Don't care if they was in a club last night. Don't care about none of that. The only thing I care about is them hearing that there is a man named Jesus. God, the songwriter said it, and I echo it. I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who can save. So, God, my answer today is yes. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. Yes to your way. God, I pray that you continue to keep your hand on our life. We thank you in advance of what you're getting ready to do. It's in Jesus' name. And everybody say it.